This is the night that the Lord is born. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Tonight, we celebrate the birth of Jesus, and we enter this sacred story through carol and lesson and candlelight. We embrace this holy night wherever we find ourselves. Our luminaries have borne witness throughout this season to the light that we believe has come and is coming. And this night, the pews are filled with luminaries, representing your light shining in the sanctuary and the light of anyone who has ever been with you here on Christmas Eve. As you bring the sanctuary into your home this holy night, open yourself to receive anew the light of Christ. Find your place in the beloved lessons from the Gospel of Luke. We yearn to see the scene play out, to hear the music of the angels, to feel the rush to the manger, to see what this star that pierces the night sky has come to proclaim. We so desire to believe the good news of the messengers. Do not be afraid. Our very faith calls us to believe, especially in the midst of difficult times, that Christ is the light that pierces the night. hidden from sight, even when love feels so remote, even when God seems silent, even then, we believe of heaven on earth that we catch in the faces and light of those around us, even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when our view is obscured by clouds of doubt. 
you have ignited the flame of hope, love, joy, peace, and this night the light of Christ within us. Let us glow with its brilliance from the inside out. The peace of Christ be with you. I invite you to offer to those who surround you the peace of Christ, or turn to a window and offer the peace of Christ to the world. Christ's peace be with you. Amen. Hi, welcome back. I can't believe it's already Christmas Eve. Happy Christmas Eve, you guys. Can you believe that we have learned four whole verses of this little light of mine? I'm pretty impressed, honestly. You guys are pros now, I bet. So I was thinking tonight, since we learned a verse each Advent Sunday, we might just give it a whirl and put them all together and sing them all. What do you think? You wanna give it a whirl? Let's try it.
job, you guys. That was so much fun. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the gift of music and for the opportunity to sing and sign with the children of the Claremont United Methodist Church. It's been so much fun. Help our hearts continue to sing and our hands always continue to dance. Let us remember to be grateful for the things we have today as we pray for those who are experiencing loss this Christmas. Thank you, God, for sending your son to us on that Christmas day all those years ago. Jesus was such a gift to us. He taught us so many lessons and gave us so many gifts, including our light. Help us to let it shine. Amen. Merry Christmas, guys. have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For all of Advent, we have called on the power of music that inspires those who hear it to a brighter tomorrow. It has been a difficult time during this pandemic for singing to be restricted. We've been reminded of just how important it is to sing together. Indeed, music has so often been the soundtrack of hope. Tonight, we bring you another carol of resistance. It is a song you no doubt have heard on many other Christmas Eve nights. But this time, listen with a new appreciation. Written in France by poet Placide Capot with melody by Adolf Adams, the song was banned from church services when Capot's theology was deemed heretical. Even though the church in France tried to kill the song, American abolitionist minister John Sullivan Dwight embraced the song's message of humility and shared humanity and made it popular in the Civil War era with its third verse proclaiming a radical message. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease. Someday we will once again be able to join our full voices in song in our sanctuary. At that time we will sing as never before. This night, allow this song to be our prayer of hope that we shall overcome the inequity that still haunts us.
And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was the first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. There were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid.
And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And it shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel of multitude of heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill toward all. shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Thank you. 
was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines into the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a parent's only son, full of grace and truth, the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we gather this holy night aware of your presence with us wherever we are. We are grateful for the light of Christ in our lives. And we pray that in this time of worship together we have drawn in the light we need the love we need the faith we need to believe that you are with us your holy spirit surrounds us and your holy spirit joins us heart to heart and home to home as we gather this christmas eve And as we continue to consider sacred text proclaimed in carol, in anthem, in bell, we pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts might be pleasing and acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, we've made it to the manger. We've made it to Christmas Eve. What a joyful time we have had already. Now I need to tell you that I learned my very first year preaching on Christmas Eve, that no one really comes to Christmas Eve worship to hear a sermon. So my first gift to you is that my words will be brief. I'm gonna tell you two stories tonight two stories about two of the carols within this worship service. One is a story about O Holy Night that might not be familiar to you. And the other is a story of Silent Night, that treasured carol just over 200 years old that we sing every year as our concluding hymn, as we light our candles and lift that light high. I am grateful and amazed at the technology that brings us together. It reminds me a little of pictures I've seen of people gathered around old radios listening together on Christmas Eve. Perhaps they were listening to music or a radio play, but gathered, listening, 
And so I want to tell you a story about the very first radio broadcast. The very first radio broadcast happened because a man named Reginald Fessbender wanted to improve the weather news that ships on the Atlantic coast would receive. Now, a man named Marconi, you may have heard of him, um, he is credited with developing the technology of the telegraph, and in the earliest days, ships actually referred to it as Marconi and Marconi operators. So through Morse code, there were communications from ship to ship and ship to shore, all by Morse code. Well, Mr. Fessbender wanted a reliable way to get rapid weather reports out to all of those ships. And so he began experimenting with a different way to transmit radio waves. Without giving you the technical names, I'll tell you that its initials were AM. This was the origin of AM radio. Well, he had tested, he had tested his device, and then he decided that he would do a broadcast, the first ever radio broadcast. He did this in 1906 on Christmas Eve. And so there was a fleet of ships on the Atlantic coast, all with people at their Marconis, listening for whatever might come in. And what they began to hear was music as he played a recording. There was to be a speech, but the person who was supposed to make it got stage fright. So, Fassbender picked up his violin, and on his violin, he began to play, O oh, Holy Night. And so these ships at sea who usually heard dots and dashes, heard O oh, Holy Night. And then he read from the same scripture we read from tonight, Luke chapter 2. He read the Christmas story, 1906 not really that long ago, the first radio broadcast of voice, of live music. And look where we are today. Look at the technology that joins us today, that keeps us connected today. The first radio broadcast was O Holy Night on Christmas Eve. Now, the other story I want to tell you is probably one you have heard. It, you might have heard it because it was, it celebrated its 100th anniversary just a few years ago. But during World War I, when Silent Night was a little more than 100 years old, on the Western Front, of World War I, British troops and German troops were in their trenches. And on Christmas Eve, the fighting had died down. There were fires and lights in the trenches. There were even some fir branches along the trenches. And the British began to hear the Germans sing a song they knew. They began to hear the Germans sing Silent Night in German. And they began to sing in English. This happened up and down the Western Front, and it's known as the Christmas Truce. Those troops along the trenches in World War I believed in peace. Peace on earth for just a few hours. The fighting ceased. The strains of silent night united them briefly in their humanity. And the story of that night is still told. Can we believe 
in a peace that surpasses understanding even in the midst of pandemic? Can we believe even when we are not together here? Can we believe even when we are not with the people we wish we could be with this night? Can we believe even in the midst of understandable anxiety and concern? We know the losses of this year. We know the losses in our own lives and we know the losses across the globe. Can we believe even when all of this has transpired? I believe we can. I believe we can because we believe every night, but especially we're reminded on this night that God is with us. God is with us and the light of Christ shines on us. The light of Christ fills our hearts and our homes. The light from that Bethlehem star still shines in our faith. I believe even when we have been through a year like 2020, I believe. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, heaven and earth meet this day in the newborn child, the savior of the world. We celebrate the birth of the Holy One, for in this child you come close to us that we might be close to you. Especially we give thanks for the birth, life, death, and resurrection of our savior. Jesus the Christ and all he means for us and for our world for the prospect of peace among neighbors and nations for confidence in your eternal love for those who generously give for those who graciously receive for our churches nurturing us in the story of your love God of all mercy 
as you have come in Jesus Christ to be our guest, inspire our hearts to a hospitality that welcomes all your children in Christ's name. We pray healing God for those who are sick and suffering, for those who know no laughter, only tears, for those who govern and lead, for those enslaved by tyranny, racism, and oppression, for those held captive by addiction or mental illness. May we truly be your church, O oh God, a refuge for those in need. All this we pray in the name and spirit of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now, sisters and brothers, we join our hearts and our voices in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Abba, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We give thanks for our staff, our musicians, our acolytes, readers, and so many volunteers who have given their time, talents, and care to make our Advent services and this Christmas Eve service so beautifully meaningful for all of us. Your faith and your dedication have brought us together in ways that we could never have imagined in this year when we are physically separated from one another. Thank you is too small a sentiment for all that you have given. Thank you is too small a concept to encompass the many blessings, even in this challenging year that God has showered upon us the blessings of family and loved ones and of our community of faith. Especially this night, we give thanks for the blessing of Christ Jesus who came into our world to redeem, to save, to care for us, helping us to know God more fully. We offer our gifts and our tithes, our hearts and our very lives for the mission and ministries of peace and justice that God is calling us to. After this we will remember this night this Christmas Eve when we thought perhaps that light and song would elude us but here we are we will light our lights and we will dare to sing silent night just like those soldiers did in World War one for this moment this night 
Let us remember. We are not alone. We believe that the light of God's love and promise shines again and again in hope for a better tomorrow, in love that works for a more equitable world, in joy that wells from places deep within us, sometimes even in the midst of sorrow, and in a peace that surpasses understanding and offers us the assurances we need. The light of Christ be with you. May the light of the Christ child shine in you. And may the comfort of the Holy Spirit surround you. This, this holy, holy night, night. Go, in go in peace. Stay, Stay encouraged. encouraged. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.